we have Victor Emaye. He is a business development consultant, a project manager and business developer. And he will be uh, doing the topic with us this morning on SME's role in nation building. Good morning, Victor, and you're welcome. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for joining us this morning. So let's start this way. Uh, when you hear the word nation building, I know quite a number of times you're, what you use in your head is, oh, how to build the nation. So what role does SMEs play in nation building? Okay, um, once again, thank you for having me here. Um, looking at um, the nation Nigeria, you know, obviously we know that we need that change that everyone is clamoring for. Now, the first, I like to talk with facts, so the first thing I will say is um, Nigeria currently has 95% of its um, companies filled with SMEs, meaning 95% of the companies in Nigeria currently are small businesses or small and medium scale en enterprises. Now, looking at these businesses, obviously, um, looking at the different kinds of setups that we have them, obviously, they are the ones providing every kind of thing that we have in the country today. So okay. we can never overemphasize the importance of SMEs in Nigeria. Okay. Looking from job creation to contributing positively to the GDP. And looking at um, other countries aside Nigeria, you see that their businesses contribute a lot more even than Nigeria. Imagine that Nigeria has 95% and the 95% only contributes 45% of our GDP. That is a whole lot, but it's, it's a whole lot of contribution. Looking at the fact that they provide jobs for youth today and um, they cannot do so much. Looking okay. at the fact that the government is also not playing their role in ensuring that these SMEs are growing and becoming profitable. Now, looking at about Nigeria, the success of every business in Nigeria breeds a successful Nigeria. Hmm. So when we have 100 startups start their company today, and in five years, 100 startups are successfully, and they successfully have absorbed 50 staff into their system, that is, they are paying people, mm -hmm. those people they are paying are feeding their family, they are sending their children to school. That is going into education, they are getting married, events planners are making money, and it brings tranquility to the system. It brings, so we cannot have like a more sustainable future for Nigeria, looking at the fact that small businesses are thriving. You mentioned about the government not playing uh, key roles in making sure that the SMEs are able to, you know, bring in enough capital resources to the country. But what I want to know is what areas do you think that the government um, can do better? Or what do you think, because really, if we're going to look at it, it shouldn't be just all about the government. government. What are the citizens and individuals also doing? So what areas do you think individuals, governments, what key areas do you think they should look into when it has to do with SMEs? Firstly, um, considering SMEs in Nigeria, we have to look into the educational sector. All right. Because before a graduate would come out and say, I want to start a business, mm -hmm. the graduate should have been sensitized about what starting a business entails. Okay. So many at times we find people studying English, Yoruba, philosophy, going into business, and they'll be like, oh, so they, they didn't get it right. So I think mean there is a standard structure for um, students to start learning a lot more about business. It's not because I studied economics that I'm... Um, just so you know, I'm a business development, business development consultant for tech. Mm. So I did economics, but I am in tech. I know programming languages, I know technologies, I know deep technologies. And, but it took me time. It was not because the pro government did that for me. It was because I de deliberately dedicated time to that. to doing that. But we don't have so many youth doing that today. The reason why a youth will start a business is because the youth did not get a job. So they think, okay, so now the government did not put that in place, knowing that there are not enough job for the youth today. So they don't have that educational structure to teach everyone business, like basic business terminologies, basic ways of starting a business, except we go on Google to read them up. I would not say government didn't put it in place, Joe. What I would ha rather have us say is that the things that are put in place, in place. are barely enough for the teeming population. Because oh, okay. if you look at policy development, you would understand that there are quite a number of things that are in there mm -hmm. that should actually help the economy. Okay. But a lot of people don't also know no. that those things are existing. Existing. That's, that's yes, the issue. Yes, that is information asymmetry. So how, how do they pass that around? How, how do they pass? They have like a regulatory body. They have the mm -hmm. NUC. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is that measure? What is that yastic? Are they getting feedbacks from these Nigerian students? Because that is like, these students are our future. 
Number two, for the current entrepreneurs that we have, what are they doing? What, uh, how much profit are they making? Do the mm. government really care? Now, the next thing we would hear is um, the CBN is giving out a grant, um, giving out loans, soft loans, and it's not pursue you and all of those things. And I'll be like, oh, really? So let's read the criteria. And I'll be like, so you expect a fresh graduate to go look for all of it? Would, it, can, it would take them as much as one year to do all of these things. Number one, not all these graduates can write a business plan. Sometimes they have to pay. To, so it's like you have to pay money to get money. How many youths can go through that stress? Sometimes I, I like to ask my friends, because consulting for SMEs, I get lots of questions as regards funding. I don't want to go straight that the major challenge is funding. funding. But that is obviously it, because you need capital. And in business, um, sources of funding, your family, your friends, loans, and all of those. So when you go into debt and you're starting a business on debt, it is not advisable. But when you're starting a business on debt, you're thinking of debt servicing, mm -hmm. not even profit making. Okay, talking about funding, you know that uh, the government won't just sit down and decide to give you funds without even, you know, having you meet the certain requirements that is expected of you. So even as a youth, while you are in school and doing all of that, I feel like you should, I mean, not even talk youth alone. If you are going to go into any business, you should have a proper plan for yourself. You yes, know what you want to do. Plan. You should know what you are going to be using the funds for because we've had situations where governments, individuals would invest in certain businesses and then tomorrow it is failing. Why? Because you didn't have um, that, that capacity and enough um, requirements that is expected of you to make that business successful. So most of the times, we should not just put all of it to uh, blaming the government blaming of the not government. giving funds, um, necess necessary funds. Because even when they do that, what exactly are the individuals that are giving the funds to? What are they doing to build themselves and make uh, good sense out of the business um, that they are being funded, funded for? for? Exactly. But uh, let's talk about the next um, question, which says that how important is it for us to, you know, tap into... SMEs um, for global economy. Now, we're not just limiting it to um, Nigeria. For global recognition, basically, how can we tap into this sector and see how we can get global recognition through SMEs? Okay, that's simple. It okay. is problem solving. Now, the best way to start a business is to look for a good problem. No, good problem. So, <laughs> Hold up, hold up, hold up. What is a bad problem? Before you continue, just let's get that out of mm -hmm. our systems. What's a bad problem and what what's is a good okay. problem? Now, um, generally, a problem is a problem. Correct. But there are, there, are, there are problems that cannot be solved by individuals. Okay. And there are problems that when you look at it, you can obviously solve them. Is that you, what makes them bad or good? Um, I'm just, that's why I said in quotes, good oh, problem. Okay. So right, good problem is in, in, in terms of, okay, this problem, I can actually look, for, look at what I could do to prefer solutions to these problems. Now, the only reason why we would see an example of an SME, just to put this in, is um, I'm selling a bag. I'm a small business, so I'm selling a bag. Another example of an SME is I'm running a tech startup company. Okay. But one is solving a problem. One is selling good, satisfying your need, okay. like luxury. So I want to buy a bag of 10,000 air. It's luxury. But can you see the difference? So one, the tech startup simply looked at the challenge and said, okay, this is a problem and, and I think I can solve this. And that puts you more in the global space than selling a bag. So tapping into the global space, you need to look at significant Nigerian problems that you can solve. And that's, that's simply, it takes you through a number of processes. That is um, ideation. You need, you need to look at how you could solve these problems and generate innovative ideas. ideas. And one of the 21st century fluency is innovation and creativity. You need to tap into this resource and prefer solutions innovatively. Then once you have the idea, that's, that's what people call business idea. So you have that idea and, okay, I can solve this challenge. It is just an idea. Then you start to build a business plan where you get to build your business model. And that is what would tell you that, okay, this can give me how much revenue and how much profit once I launch into the market. Now, with this, solving the challenge would get the, um, that, the attention of people in the global market. And any business that you can run successfully in Nigeria, forget it. <laughs> now, you find out that those SMEs that started out because their founder needed money 
once they start making profit and they are able to have to pay themselves, that's all they ever do. Yes. Like they just do not grow beyond that level. They just get comfortable in that zone. The question now is this. What should be the real motivating factor for starting an SME? Okay. Now, um, looking at Nigerians, um, if we are really driven by change, we would not be motivated by our stomach. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. So uh, as much as, um, what, what, who, who are value-driven leaders, really? Is it that those people that run NGOs and cater for people's needs do not have money to, how do they feed their families? Do, do, does anybody really care? But we have these people thinking of the general good, like the good of Nigerians in entirety. So looking at starting a business in that line, okay, we, you could call them social enterprise. Now, a social enterprise is one that would start a business to make profit and also cater for the needs of people or to solve certain challenges in the society. Now, a tech startup can do that. Any business can do that. Even if you're selling a bag, you, you can do that, really. But the, the moment we start to get it right, getting your motivating factor right, so many people might want to leave Nigeria. It's, it's because they don't know what they want. If you give me a scholarship today, I would not go, really. Mm. <laughs> but but it's, it, yes, because I know what I want. I know that once everybody starts to leave this country, nobody would solve this challenge exactly. that we have. So making solving the challenge a motivating factor, that push, puts you on that uh, that, that's radar of change agents because that is what I am. That is not what everybody would be. But a number of Nigerians that think in that line often become a lot more successful than those that think, in their, uh, think of their stomach alone mm -hmm. or feeding themselves and their families. Now, so a major motivating factor is becoming successful and thriving in a successful nation. So making money for yourself and also making your country succeed. That should be like a middle motivation for each and every one of us. But not everyone thinks about that. And that is what brings about corruption. When you think about money for yourself alone, it brings about corruption because you're not, think, you're not even thinking about your staff. You have some people that pay, their, their, um, um, that pay themselves but don't pay them, their, their, staff. their staff. That becomes a challenge because you're not motivated by the greater goal, good of everyone but you're motivated by the fact that you, you just want to get richer and richer. And that is why the poor will continue to become a lot more and the rich will continue to become rich. Hmm. Okay, now let's talk about the issue of unemployment and how SMEs can you know, curb this issue of unemployment. What areas do you think that they need to work on or build on even before thinking of starting a business? Because the first thing when you meet uh, a young person, the first thing they want to uh, get is a lot of capital, huge capital to start this business, but it doesn't work that way. So what yeah. ways do you think they can build on their skills on themselves and making sure that they start up something without having so much capital? Okay, um, the truth is youths are getting it wrong. So many of them would become graduate and want to start a business. For me, it is never advisable. It is ad a lot more advisable to go get a job and learn what it is like. If you're working a in a company, you are concerned about delivering on your job description. But the owner of the company is concerned about paying your salary. And the job description of everyone in that company is what would make them earn that salary. Like, that, mm -hmm. that's what it mm -hmm. is, really. Now, looking at the fact that these students or, or graduates, basically, have not earned that skill that can get them a job. They then shy away from looking for a job and generalize there is no job in Nigeria. Mm. There are lots of jobs. That, that is the truth. We have so many jobs in Nigeria today, but we don't have adequately prepared graduates. Skills. They don't have that skills. They don't have the soft skills. You can ask the graduates today, give me at least two of the 21st century skills. These graduates will go and check the CV and see what they put there. So many graduates don't even write their, their CVs themselves. That, that's, that is like a cause of concern for us. That is what we should also look at. Now, this is a challenge that the Nigerian youth must solve. Learning these skills, there are lots of courses, there, there are lots of platforms to learn a lot of skills on, by yourself, yes, on your own, before you go out and get a job. The job, um, the employers know what they, they are, are looking, looking for. for. They obviously know what they want. 
So they will not get somebody that would not do the job and deliver on the job and start paying you 150000 there, and you can't deliver. So they would always want to get the right people. And but I will continue to say that it is never good to start a business when you don't have that experience because you continue to fail and become the failure that you want to be. That is the truth. So it is important that you get all of these skills, and the skills is different from the experience. Now, when you do a course, let's say um, CIPM, an HRM course, you, you know, you, you don't have that skill yet. You don't have the skill yet till you practice. So it is important that after practicing, you get the experience. So the skill is different from the experience. And that would make you start your own business and be like, okay, yes, yeah, so I, I encountered this. I've seen my company do this. And this is how we relate with clients. You can add that to your own business and thrive. Hello there. Did you just enjoy that beautiful video? Don't worry, we have more for you. All you have to do is click on the subscribe button and ring that little bell for more notifications. Tea or coffee will be served for you. So making money for yourself and also making your country succeed, that should be like a middle motivation for each and every one of us. But not everyone thinks about that and that's what brings about corruption. <laughs>